When you think of England, you might imagine lush English gardens, countryside as far as the eye can see, and everyone having high tea. So in today's episode, we'll be featuring absolutely none of that. <gasps> Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of All Under Construction. I'm your host, Martin Galligan, and today we'll be featuring a new section on this channel where we'll be discovering everything Japanese right here in London and what I'll be aptly naming London's Japan. We'll be looking at some of the most beautiful and stunning Japanese landscapes that London has to offer. We'll be joined as always by regular guest and bad boy Will and with two new special guests. So get ready for an action-packed episode full of all things Japanese and all things well, not Japanese, because it's London, innit? And now for my first guest in today's episode, we none other than my friend Carl. Hey, my dear. After the Norse god suffered damage from his demonstration, we calmly walked through the greater area of Holland Park and made our way to Kyoto Garden. Kyoto Garden was established in 1991 to mark the centenary of the Japan Society in Britain and as part of the Japan Festival of the same year. It was officially opened on the 17th of September 1991 by the Prince of Wales and the Crown Prince of Japan. Let's go take a look. Built by the Kyoto Chamber of Commerce and presented as a gift to the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, the Kyoto Garden is built in the Kaiyushiki or Strolling Garden, a traditional Japanese style of garden laid out in a particular way to emphasise the natural shape and beauty of the landscape and its surroundings. The garden also features toro, or traditional lanterns made out of stone, wood or metal, commonly found illuminating the path of Buddhist temples and Shinto shrines considered as an offering to Buddha. The other feature is a stone wash basin, or tsukubai, provided at the entrance to a holy place for people to cleanse themselves with the ritual washing and at the Kyoto Garden as a place of good luck. The amazing thing is that every culture actually has a wishing well and Japan is no difference. Just toss in a coin and remember you can get anything you want. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Go. Yes, to the camera. Yes, to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> okay. After wandering around for several minutes, we made our way into the adjacent Fukushima Garden where we could sit down and unwind. The amazing thing is actually that the gardens was developed for Londoners to come and actually enjoy themselves, to relax and get away from all the hustle and bustle in London. And to be fair, it does an amazing job of that as well. And I suppose it doesn't hurt to have good friends to help as well. Kyoto and Fukushima Gardens are free to visit, however they do tend to get busy in the evenings and on weekends, so make sure you come early to avoid the overcrowding. And now back to my guest to sum up his experience. Hey, I haven't seen a mirror today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well thanks a million buddy and I'll see you again next time, alright? I don't know where I am. Martin. Figure it out mate! Bye! What? Now we kick off the next part of the episode with our regular guest Will. The Garden of Peace was created in 1910 as part of the Anglo-Japanese Alliance. It originally featured a pond and a large Japanese tea house. 
We actually ran from the 14th of May to the 29th of October 1910 and attracted an impressive 8 million visitors. Let's go take a look. In 2018, further work was carried out to celebrate Japan's roots in Hammersmith Park. Local Japanese and British companies supported the construction of an entranceway and for Japanese lanterns to mark the path towards and within the park itself. The Garden of Peace is designed to give its visitors a sense of vigour and excitement as you walk through and explore the mysteries of the Orient. Kare Sansui or Dry Gardens are also a very common feature in Japanese gardens. They usually tell a story and this one is the story of the turtle and the crane, how they make their way to Shangri-La, the island of eternal happiness. Through carefully composed arrangements of rocks and rake gravel to represent ripples in the water, the stone river Magatama is a symbol of good luck and the crane and turtle are a symbol of long life, bringing good fortune to everyone who visits the park. We explore our way through the garden and the hidden discoveries that the pathways reveal to finally relax, unwind and take it all in. Well, if you could sum up this experience in three words, what would they be? Tranquil, peaceful, enlightening. <laughs> The Garden of Peace is free, and with its spacious and vibrant atmosphere, is a one-stop wonder to get you on that tranquility train. However, due to disrespectful visitors, there has been a noticeable increase in litter throughout the park. And so let's take a moment for these people, or as they should be called, shitheads. Whether you're local of the area or an adventure seeker, do come down and you're sure to feel a day of rest at the Garden of Peace. Will knows that only too well. It's a nice gate. So anybody, thanks again and I'll see no you worry. later. No, not again. Don't leave me somewhere. Don't... Bye, see you again. And for our final guest in today's episode, it's the Queen Bee herself, Melissa. Hey! With the New Zealand local, we ventured onwards in the Royal Botanical Kew Gardens and came to the final stop of today's adventure. The Japanese landscape was created in 1996 by Professor Fukuhara of Osaka University. The landscape is divided into three distinctive terrains, the Garden of Hope, the Garden of Peace and the Garden of Activity. Let's go take a look. The Garden of Peace is reminiscent of a traditional Japanese tea garden or roji, where stone lanterns mark the path of the surrounding area to create a space of tranquility. Extensive work has been carried out on the garden with the aim of contributing to the Anglo-Japanese friendship and enhancing cultural exchange. Next to this, the Garden of Harmony, tying the other two landscapes together and giving this area the feel of an oasis of calm and beauty. Between the rhododendrons and Japanese anemone, you can sit and enjoy the surrounding gardens, with finally the Garden of Activity, filled with rake gravel, large stones and a sloped landscape, giving it a dimension of natural elements such as waterfalls and mountains, with the added tumbling and flowing movement of water. All of this and the Japanese landscape's main attraction. Chokushimon, or Gateway of the Imperial Messenger, was created in 1910 as part of the Japanese exhibition here in London. 
Created in the Momoyama style of the late 16th century, the gate is a near replica of the Nishi Honganji in Kyoto, Japan. The gateway is made of enoki wood, or Japanese cypress, with a traditional roof made out of copper. It's embellished with an array of flowers and animals, and also contains an ancient legend of a pupil's absolute devotion to his master. To have something like this here in London really is something spectacular. Just to be taken in by the sheer craftsmanship and the precision to detail that's here, it really is breathtaking. But we've also got one more surprise left here in Kew Gardens. And now, my favourite part, we're going to make some friends. Guys, hi, I'm here. Hi. <laughs> We now make our way to the last point of interest. With over 130 varieties of bamboo, we pass the trail and into the Minka House. Minka, meaning houses of the people, were common in the countryside until the mid 20th century, with many of these houses being preserved as historic landmarks. After the bombing of 1945, the Inezo family lived in this house until the passing of their last family member. The house was kindly donated for the Japan Festival of 2001 by the Japan Minka Reuse and Recycle Association. Decorated around the house with the sacred bamboo Nandina, believed to dispel bad dreams, this house is a reminder of all things beautiful from the land of the rising sun. Melissa, just to end the episode, did you enjoy your time at Kew Gardens? Hated it, mate. <laughs> I yes. love it, it's great. So, Melissa, it was a great time, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye. You can't just... See you later! <laughs> a visit to Kew Gardens will set you back nearly £18, but there is so much more to explore. Just be sure to bring your friends. So there you have it, an action-packed, filled episode full of all things Japanese. So whether it's between the cool sophistication of Kyoto Gardens, the bustling and easy-going Garden of Peace, or the tranquil Japanese landscape at Kew Gardens. You're guaranteed to have a day to remember. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, let's keep going. That's enough of that, keep going. <laughs>